Hello and welcome to the Chino Challenge 2023 at the Chino Fairgrounds. I'm Jeffrey Best alongside Tommy Mason. Tommy, this is one of the biggest, one of the baddest in Southern California. Why do we always look forward to this event? It's an event I always look forward to because of the competitors. We've got so many competitors here at the Chino Fairgrounds. We are located in the middle of town around an industrial complex area, but that center right there, the dirt is where the action will be as we got some great competitors and they travel from all over Southern California, even Central California, to come to this Chino Challenge. And they don't only just pack up the pits, they pack up the grandstands. We are ready to go here for the 32nd annual event. A lot of money on the line. These are the key numbers. 32 cars, only 18 spots available. Now, how do we set these lineups? Three derby heats. The mad dog in each event, the guy who's going to go the craziest, is going to get an automatic transfer. And then your top four finishers in each event. And these cars are ready to go for heat number one. Another notable number that you uh, just kind of, it's maybe for the drivers, not so much for us, over $25,000 in posted awards. Here is your heat one lineup. We got the 12 of Zachary Oliver, the two of Alex Torres, but Jeffrey, what are some of the names and numbers that you see that already look like good competitors? Well, well, we know that there's a couple of characters already that are going to be in heat race number one. Uh, the 12, I had a brief conversation with him. He's in his first ever demolition derby. He said, don't even touch my car with an onboard camera. Don't even bother putting it on. Uh, the 7N machine got, had a had a fun little conversation with Frank Garza and the team. He said, I'm the crazy one as we go crazy. It's time for the Chino Demolition Derby of 2023. All right, you can see them all going to the center, working out each other's hits, and we're already, we're already on the gas early. Now, this will be three heats. Again, what you don't want to do is finish the second half, the bottom half, of the results, and you don't want to go in the moat. No, you do not. Here's Alec Torres. We're watching the onboard camera. Look at this hit. <laughs> Grab for something and don't fly out the windshield. Torres, man, his crew told him, they said, give him hell out there. Look at that. He is, I mean, he did that track shot on the 57A of Andrew Oatman. That'll wake you up. As we said, that 7M, you see him. Look at this. Look at the damage already to yeah. that 57. The left rear, I don't know how that's hanging on right now. Again, this is pivotal moments in these heat <laughs> races as Torres puts the uh, the car in the moat. That's the 12, the rookie of Oliver. And Oakman, he can already, I guess, be nervous for the fact that he's got that left rear damage. You do not want to go in that last chance qualifier if you can save yourself from doing it and sometimes you can get hung up in a bad spot and get a big hit that could put you out early or put you in a moat. You've seen some cars already struggling, some in the moat. The 77, the vaccinator is kind of getting just kind of looks like dead stick in the dirt there. So uh, that driver's struggling. That's Charles Mitchell riding along with Torres. He's still giving him hell. Yeah, he's still going after it. You can see he's working that shift there. We got a tire, tire rolling. That was probably from the 57 that you see there. Aaron Patton in the 8P, he's stuck in the center of the arena trying to wiggle his way through this one. And now we're losing some body pieces. You know, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of buildup, a lot of people talking about what they want to accomplish in this Demolition Derby. But Tommy, there was some trash talking going on as well. A yeah. lot of these drivers come out here. They don't care about the victory. They are here for the Mad Dog. That this is one of those drivers, yeah. by the way. The number 20. Watch out for him, Ryan Doty. Already getting some big hits here. Oh! <laughs> Oh, but he loses the tire. No, like. he ran over the... I oh. thought he did, too, for a second. The perfect visual. But the Mad Dog, Jeffrey, it's a trophy that these drivers love to have. Why? Because it means that you put on the biggest hits. It means you put on the biggest show, and the crowd always loves a Mad Dog. Aaron Patton there in the number eight. That car seems to be struggling just a little bit. He's not a rookie to this event. He's done a couple of these demolition derbies. Just trying to hang in there. I'm still watching. This This is uh, we're riding along with Partita, but the Torres machine, the number two, every time I see that thing drive by, it cracks me up. I think he, I don't think he got a throttle pedal. I think he's got a light switch that controls the throttle because it's always on the gas. You see Oatman there trying to 
make some moves and some hits as Patton takes a shot there in the center. The 72. That is Ozzy Robles. And Torres is smoking. It's steaming. <laughs> Up it's I don't know how much time that thing's got left in it in this heat race because there's plenty of cars still moving. And he's chasing down the 57 of Oatman. So remember, the Mad Dog is going to get the transfer, and then the top four finishers are going to get the transfer. So we're already seeing some of the cars falling out here. <laughs> this one's not giving up. It no. came in with one of the prettiest paint jobs, certainly, that number two certainly. of Torres. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was the most basic paint scheme ever. Now you see them all piled up in the center, working each other over. And, uh, yeah, you're trying to get into a transfer spot and you're seeing all these stopped cars but you don't know how much damage you can inflict on your own car just by trying to maybe survive and put yourself in a bad spot here's frank garza this car had some heavy damage early on in this he race Ooh. but he, frank hasn't given up on this one again he touts himself he says look i'm the crazy one of our <laughs> team he said this was hot weather by the way coming into this event he said i'm not even worried Ooh. about it we're used to that hot weather 118 degrees this is comfortable that's yeah that's probably uh they probably got short shorts for that one. Oh, and oatman there <laughs> spinning the rim now that's all that's left he's dug himself a hole garza and the 7m pinning Look him down and Doty bouncing robles there going across track to get Patton. So it looks like, Jeffrey, we are down to about five left running. Yeah, some of these cars look like they're going to be well set up going into the main event. Doty's car doesn't even look like it's been in a derby yet mm -hmm. uh, compared to some of these other cars that have taken a lot of damage so far. Just look at how beat up the 7M of Garza is there to the right. Riding along here with Doty. He's making some... Uh some corners and some turns you know that as a driver you're looking around trying to see who is the next victim for yourself you again don't want to put yourself in a bad spot by looking around especially in these heat races we got steam in there it looks like Patton or is that Patton doesn't have a front end no that, that thing number is eight. flaming that now. thing He's was to get much started. bigger when it started this heat race there's Alex Torres riding along with him he's gonna get a oh, big yeah. old slam on the front end and here comes the Partita machine. Taking a look on the onboard there as he makes a big smack. You can see that neck is going to fill it tomorrow. Robles with a lot of steam pouring <laughs> out of that one. You're still in it the fight, though. I mean, it's still a derby. And you, you never know going into these heats just how long they're going to last. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people hanging in there. That 7M of Garza, I still don't know how it's still running, but it is. The guy will not give up on that car mm -hmm. as long as he can go. Guards is on board. Shot oh! of the head. <laughs> Falls over to the passenger seat. You can see another angle of it here. Robles making Garza feel that one tomorrow. Yeah, sometimes you can wear yourself out of the driver. And we got a train uh, going Patton across the track. Is. Goodbye. Patton going to try to put Partita in the moat. They stopped just short of it. Now, how can you use that moat to your advantage? Well, you can put yourself in a good spot to knock the competitor you're after into it but again just like in any demolition derby sometimes your setup can be an easy opportunity for another competitor to stick you in that same spot now it's time for ryan Doty. he's gonna try to push robo somewhere he's, oh, yeah. he's just along for the ride at this point absolutely look at him going uh he's doing a figure eight motion oh we got fluid though coming out of the Is exhaust that? pipe the 20 who looks to be the strong car out of oh, the wow race. that could spell disaster here you can see the steam coming from, it looks like, is that the 20? It is. So so Ryan Doty, we were just talking about how good his car was looking early on in the heat race. And that that is the type of mechanical issue that could spell the end of your day. Yeah. I mean, we're going to keep an eye on that. I mean, but there's other cars steaming and smoking, so I guess. Yeah, but out of the exhaust pipe. <laughs> yeah, that one we saw. The 72 Robles steaming out of the radiator. The bit of an overflow there. And we still got five decent runners in this derby. As time is moving along, look at the two, though. <laughs> Torres, <laughs> that car is shortened up, too. We're on board with Torres. He's, look what he's doing with that right hand, though. He is running the throttle off of his right hand because <laughs> the throttle pedal is broken. He's taking his left hand and working the shifter. <laughs> You see that? Never back in reverse. 
and he's just trying to make his way through this heat now with basically the use of only his hands. Oh my goodness. He's stuck there alongside the eight of Patton. What a great shot there on board to see some of the mechanical work and physical work from behind the wheel. Well, this heat continues on, and it is still a chess match as, as far as who's going to be there at the end. You just saw a glimpse of the 73 of Matt Burns. Haven't talked a lot about Matt Burns. I, I'm looking at Garza pointing at his car. I don't know if, if he's indicating for a hit or maybe a fire. I don't know. You never know with these cars. There's always a lot going on, but Partita, we've seen a lot out of this 108 car. Not afraid to do some hits. <laughs> we, we see a lot, not a lot left of the two car, but, but he's still, still moving. <laughs> that still counts. You, you obviously are on the clock in a demolition derby. If you've never seen one, there is a clock being run on each car. If you are stalled out for longer than a certain time, you will be clocked out as your finishing result, regardless if your car is running or not. You don't want to sit and you don't want to put yourself oh. in the boat. Ozzy, he probably felt that downhill and put it in reverse. Sometimes, like I said, when you look around for your next victim, you can put yourself in a weird position to try to have to get out of. And the red is out. That looks to be it for heat number one. Wow. So a couple of these cars, some of the obvious ones going to make it through. The 72 Robles, the 73 of Burns. Now the question is on Doty's 20, amongst others. You can see some of the aftermath here in this one. So here are your results. Andrew Oatman in the 57A, the tireless wonder out there getting the Mad Dog. Oh yeah, man. Well, a lot of good hits there. He had early damage, was was able to continue on. How about the two of Alex Torres? He, he transfers. fought through that whole thing. Partita, that one away may have looked uh, the best throughout the whole derby as far as on average, but a lot of those cars are gonna have to come from the LCQ, which will be coming up later. You ready for heat race number two? Hey, that heat one was spectacular. I am ready for heat number two. Here are some of the drivers in this one. We got the double zero of Brad Fall, winner of this event years past, Dakota Ellis. In the 14, Randy Mikowski, Brian Horton, Gage Flack, and Brady Baker. That is your first five. Jacob Foyle, Steve McWilliams, as we look around inside the cars and around the track at some of these cars. Randy Dunlop in the 247. Stan McDonald, another previous winner. And Trevor Hanlon in the 3522. And actually, the 3522, I believe, is a driver named Ethan. We have co drivers Wait a minute. in the 3522 as we go green with Stan McDonald. Oh, right <laughs> off the bat. Oh, man. McWilliams on board. We're, we're seeing probably, yep, that first hit. Where well, he got a shot on the 707. You can see it there of McDonald. I wanted to say it about the first heat. I want to say it now about this heat. All of these heats are stacked. You got a lot of big hitters in each of these. That's what makes the Chino Challenge. As all the best of the Southwest do battle here in Chino. Brian Horton going across the track in reverse. <laughs> And a big slam there. I'm pretty sure we saw some drool <laughs> coming out from that helmet. Brady Baker, he is the recipient of that drool from Horton. And McDonald's going to the moat. Oh, he's pouring it, trying to get out of there. The official running from the dirt. And he does. He wow. drives out of it, which is tough to do at times. But that probably just set Stan off. Here's Flack in the a 75. real good hit there from the 75. So flat drilling. These cars are so welded up yeah. that you you almost have to prioritize going after the wheels. Mm -hmm. What else can you do? You got to go for the wheels. You got to sometimes wear these drivers out too. I mean, physically, these cars are pretty dang tough. And they're the big shot there. McWilliams lays it on. Seeing Here. some uh, critical damage right now to the 88. <laughs> we got them piled up there in the center of the officials. <laughs> looking on there you said is ethan in the 3522 yeah so, so we have two drivers going we on. do we do i don't even know how like if you're if you're trevor who who will be running later supposedly like you don't even know if this car is going to be I'm around sure you're right but i guess hey if you got a best friend you might as well use them and again saving the driver's stamina right after these seats you can see in that first seat 
how hard they can be. We already see some hard hits in the second heat. Yeah. Maybe it is worth having two drivers. So, oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, uh, McWilliams, he's puking out water there. He's got practically no steering. And now he's got a pileup. There comes Horton. Going after Ethan. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So we have a couple cars that are looking in big trouble. 88B Bra Brady Baker looks like he might have been the first one out of this event with some heavy left front damage. That car, as you like to call it, has a street sweeper set up. Yes, it does. It's going, uh, it's, cleaning, the 90, it's cleaning the track. The 95 doesn't look much better off. Ethan with a shot on the 36 of Mikowski. Brad Foyle, the double zero driver, the last time you and I were at this event together, he won it. 2012 winner, Brad Foyle. So he's out there looking to be a returning champion of this event. As you see him all piled up there in the center. Always interesting to see the different approaches to an event like this. Uh, even down to the tires and wheels mm -hmm. and how big you want to run them. Some oh. people, oh yeah. And you also have to watch out uh, for those bumps. These cars, you said the tires and wheels, but also the suspension. These, they lock up the suspension to oh. limit movement, but we've got a red, we got debris, and... That looked we, like it may have come out of Stan McDonald's yeah, car. Yeah, we saw when he was bouncing through the track, it looked like there was something that was smoking beneath it. So did he lose something? Let's take a look at a replay. Right here, slow-mo. Oh, looks like something in the drive line. Oh. Maybe it was the drive line. Take a look here at our trackside camera. You see nothing but smoke there. Oh, there is something steaming. That's the that is the drive shaft with the brake attached. So the entire drive line to the rear end has broken off. These drivers, if you just now figured it out. Instead of using brake rotors near the wheels, you might as well slow down the drive shaft that's turning those rear wheels. And I don't know if you're going to be able to fix that before the, the yeah, LCQ. You better have the spare ready to go, but that looked more terminal hey, than that. Sam's got crazy Steve Cook in he his does. pit area, so, so they're going to at least give it a, a scout try out there. Well, the heat race is continuing on here. Now, who is still running is going to be the question. Yeah, these red flags can really pose a threat to... The running vehicles, and they can get them fired back up. 247 still getting after it. He goes to Ethan and Horton there. 247. That is driver Randy Dunlap. We're on board Steve McWilliams, who is uh, yeah, a shot with that from Horton. Yeah, with that left front on the ground, pretty much so is the driver. So <laughs> you can right. see the where the headlights would be would be where his eyebrow. It we have a, a lot of cars that are that are getting stuck. I've noticed the double zero foil. I think he's still attached to the 707. He yeah. hasn't been able to roll away. You got some of these cars with yeah, suspension issues. Yeah, the double zero is just spinning the wheels. So that's, that could be what puts foil in an LCQ run, how which is the, not what the, you want. I'm, I'm enjoying the, the Firemobile here. Trevor slash Ethan. Now, it was registered as Trevor. But I guess uh, maybe they just didn't. We'll see if Ethan is going to use his whole car up because yeah. he's still running, and that's a good thing. It is. Except for Trevor, who's waiting <laughs> in the wings, is like, well, come on, let's have enough car for me to play with. So the story on uh, Ethan and Trevor, they're Chino fireworkers that decided, hey, we're going to split the car. They even said, we're partially sponsored by the union. Very so, cool. So this uh, a 35. Pitch in effort. And I, I think most of the crew. Fireworker. So, so really neat to see uh, some of our first responders being able to get out and lit off a little bit of steam. Looks like Double Zero Foil just broke his stick there at the bottom of the screen. We look to have three competitors still running. So Ethan making a run for it. He, if we got three left running, that means these three are definitely yeah. transferring to the main. Just waiting on the clock, seeing if some of these drivers time out. Horton, or with break a, their stick. Horton with a great looking 42 wagon there. Here comes Mikowski oh, with a shot. You don't want to take a big hit no. this close to the end of your heat. Not at all. And that was just kind of searching for the next hit. And Mikowski saw his opportunity. And 
Put it to the 35-22. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like we're just yeah. down to the three. And that's a hang up there. But Ethan's done his job in this heat race. Yes. So we're probably going to see. Oh! Oh! And now he's getting the fans dirty. Dirt faithful. <laughs> but he's in the moat now. But he might be okay. As that's long as, as long, there's the oh, red flag. Yeah. I think he made it, which means Trevor is going to have an opportunity in the main event to come out in that car. But man, did anyone stick out to you in this, in this heat? There was a lot of hits early on, and there was a lot of fatigue in this derby. I feel like McWilliams getting the Mad Dog. You saw how much damage was on that 95. Ellis, Mikowski, Horton with some big hits, and Ethan and Trevor's team, the 35-22, go to the transfer, leaving Foyle, Dunlap, Brad Foyle, McDonald, and others going to that last chance qualifier. It's time for Chino Challenge Heat 3. We are not done yet. We still have another stacked heat race coming up at you. Tom Strong in the one, Gary Flack in the 22, Derek Partita in the 43. The, we got a charity car. We'll get into that here in a little bit in the 48. 61 of Joshua Babb, Kevin Denzoin in the 69, Aaron Herring in the 91, the 198 of Scott Hensley, 327 of George Doerr, Rudy Garcia in the 760, I think there's a nickname to that car, and the 5150 of Byron Northcutt. We're <laughs> on board with some. We see the cars in some of the other shots. The, yes. the 760, the nickname, do you want it? I'd love it. Stinky Pinky. Stinky Pinky. I knew it was some <laughs> crazy nickname. We are green. Heat number three is on. Chino Challenge. And you can see it's the sun is setting, the lights are bright. And the fans are enjoying every minute of it. Now tell me about this charity car that's out here. So the charity car, it is up for auction. The highest bidder gets to run in the Chino Ooh, Challenge. Hensley putting <laughs> the one of Strong up into the wall. Now remember I told you earlier, there are some rivalries mm. coming into this one. A lot of people were talking about the one car going into this event. Hey, look, I can't tell you one way or the other whose side to be on with this, but just know that there's some <laughs> hurt feelings out there. <laughs> Putting salt on that wound there. Now, Strong, when he got shoved into the wall there, he has not been able to move from that position. And you got to be careful when you oh. get put up into a, a K-Row position is a big hit there from Northcutt. But if you get put up in the, into the K-Rail, the way that these cars, the rigid factor of mm -hmm. them, it can really mess with the underbody of the cars and what's going on with the components. You talked about you know, the driveline that we saw Stan McDonald have an issue with in the last derby. That's a, that's a big concern for a lot of these people. Absolutely. So. And like you said, when these cars are nosed or backed into the wall, that's a good strong point for somebody else to go and clobber them. We're lighting up the birthday candles out there. there. Someone are. just lost a radiator. Steaming on the corner there. We're looking at the 5150 Psycho Byron as he's looking for a victim. And that steam is still steaming over there in the corner. Byron Northcutt. Ooh. Oh, we're going to put another person and in the corner pocket. The 91 goes in the mode, but he backs out. <laughs> I think he got towed out. So Aaron Herring still in this one. This 61 that you see here, uh, I love this car. Joshua Babb. That thing was rusted. That was the paint job. It was just rust. <laughs> Barn fine. But well, we see the one and the 198, Strong and Hensley can going figure, after each other. Can you figure out who I think, might not like each other? I think I think they brought some extra baggage to this fight. Well, they have teammates, too. So, yeah. you know, there, there's going to be a lot going on. A lot to keep track of. As oh. We continue on. Big hit there. Oh, they're piling it in there in the center. Strong goes across the track, gets Denzoin. In the 69, here comes Northcutt. Oh! It's Strong. Strong's going to back up into the wall. Where are you going? I think he was on his way out of the arena. And maybe his foot was in reverse trying to drive away, but oh, also man. got hit at the same time, and it sent the one into the dirt. What a hit there from Northcutt. And Strong's going to drive out of it. There goes another radiator. Man, I don't think that driver can see where he's going. That looks to be the... Uh, I believe that was the 91 yeah. of Aaron Herring. Yeah. I can't believe Strong, who cleared the moat and went into the wall, was able to drive out. And he gets the 198 <laughs> again. He so found Hensley. Him. Hensley, after Strong, 
And you can see we're on board as they are throttled up, trying to go after each other. These derby cars could be like magnets. Yeah. Especially when you don't like somebody. There's the charity car with the cone on top. Almost looks like it's blinking. So unfortunately, we don't have a name for charity car, but we're going to label it as charity car. But again, very cool. This is a, a, a basically a highest donation to the local charity that whoever laid that donation down is behind the wheel there of the 48. So, <laughs> hey, to have the chance oh. potentially to go into the main event tonight. Nice hit there. Again, Psycho Byron. Byron going Laying back up. across track into Strong, which also knocks Strong into Hensley and probably more hurt feelings. There's still some plenty good cars in this one. I see Ooh. some sparks. What's going on there? Yeah, so some sparks starting to fly from underneath the hood of the one. The 198 <laughs> almost mowed it himself. Saddle down there, drivers. We talked about, remember that early hit into the K-Rail for Tom Strong, yeah. and somehow the, or sometimes the components could get damaged with those. Uh, you got to wonder what might be sparking in that area of the car. It looked like mm -hmm. it was further oh, back. The one of Strong just broke his stick, so he's out. But did he fall out in the appropriate time? To have I, the last five cars. I don't know. It looks like it, we certainly have four strong running cars here. And that's the number to remember, right? Right. Top four in the results move and there's on. there's the flag. But the Mad Dog But there's the two. fifth. So, so we have enough cars running right now, and likely the Mad Dog may be part of this. We're going to find out as the results are going to be coming up. There's the 327. We saw him lose his radiator. No surprise that Cycle Byron Northcutt going to be our Mad Dog transfer. With but Partita. look at the top of the last chance qualifier. Tom Strong did not transfer. He did not make it. The but, seven. of course, the 198 of Hensley did. So those two <laughs> went after each other the entire derby, and one of those two have to fight their way into tonight's main event. Cycle Byron the Mad Dog. Wow. So some great heat race action here at the Chino Derby 2023, the Chino Challenge. It was a heavy hitting one, and we still have a lot coming on Low Budget TV. We, we got more coverage of this event coming up here. WGASMotorsports.com for this full event information. But we got parts two and three featuring the last chance qualifier, but we've got a female demolition derby to crown as well. The main event also in that third segment, Jeffrey. I'm having a lot of fun so far. Heck yeah. Join us for more here from the Chino Challenge 2023.